Motivation in Motion. Own your moment and get better today. All right, Coach. Thanks for joining me here. You bet. Have Glad a little to conversation. Be. So, okay. will you tell everybody uh, who you are? Uh, Jerry Pettibone. Coach Jerry Pettibone. Well, I was a college football coach for 31 years. Right. Uh, I played high school football at Jesuit High School in Dallas okay. and then uh, had the honor to play college football at OU for Bud Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. And Coach Wilkinson had a big influence on my life. I got to play for him a little bit. I was not one of the great players at OU uh, when I played, 59, 60, and 61. In fact, I wasn't part of the 47-game winning streak. And I was on the first Bud Wilkinson team that lost a conference game in 10 years. Oh, I was on that team. Oh. I was on I was on the team that lost five and the first five and won the last five. But anyway, uh, my senior year, coach always had the seniors come mm -hmm. over to his house, kind of reminisce about your career at OU. And so uh, there was like 13 of us that came over to his house, and we had a nice evening. And and uh, he was playing the organ and. We're sitting in his den, and he looked at us, and he said, I just want you guys to know one thing. I've never been so glad to get rid of a bunch of guys, and you're, you guys caused me more headaches than any. any. Well, that's the way, to, that's the way yeah. to sit down and welcome you in the house. Yeah, that's right. So, and I don't blame him because uh, we we weren't very good. But, hey, it was uh, it was a great experience. And then, uh, then I, I went through the – ROTC program in Oklahoma. Okay. So uh, I graduated, uh, went to the artillery school, and uh, and then they sent me to Korea for 13 months, and I played service football for the Seventh Entry Division in Korea. Okay. And my coach over there was a guy named Don Hollander, who was an All-American at West Point. In fact, there's a big building up there called Hollander Hall. They named after him, and he was my coach. And we had a great team. We went undefeated. Mm -hmm. uh, we won the Far Eastern Championship. We got to play the 25th Division All-Stars in Hawaii. So we went over there and uh, won the game. Okay. And our, our general was a major general, and the, the lieutenant general was the commanding general of the 25th Division, had to salute the, the two-star. He was a three-star. Uh -huh. So our, our guy was pretty fired up about that. So he uh, he gave us uh, ten days leave uh, on Waikiki Beach. Okay, so you get a win, you got beach time. Got beach time okay. before I had to go back to Korea. I like so, it. I like it. So anyway, that's a pretty good incentive. It was. Hey, it was. It was great duty. But anyway, when I got out of the army, I actually went from Korea to Fort Hood. I played service football for the Second Armored Division okay. at Fort Hood, and then then when I left the army. I went back to OU. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a high school football coach. Okay. So I, I had graduated with a degree in business. I needed a degree in education to be a teacher and a high okay. school coach. So I got my teaching uh, certificate, and I was a student. Uh, I, I did my student teaching at U.S. Grand High School okay. in Oklahoma City. Absolutely. And so when I was through with that, uh, I was on the GI Bill, so I decided to go to law school. I went to law school for one semester. Okay. And then Coach Wilkinson said, hey, I want to – Jerry, you want to be a freshman coach? And I went, yes. Wow. <laughs> so, so, the, so the same guy that told you to get out of his living room is yeah. now offering you a job. Now he wants me to be okay. a freshman coach. Okay, I'm just making sure that I understand yeah, this, yeah, right? So yeah, you that, must have done something right. Yeah, I guess I did. I did. In fact, I had a really good game against Oklahoma State my junior year. Okay. And and we won the game. So he might have, he must have had a flashback. It's just a moment. And he's yeah. like, I got to find someone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jerry's over there at law school. Yeah. Hey, let's get him over here. Maybe so. he was saving you from law school. Yeah. Coaches coaches have a lot of intuition. Yeah. Maybe he was like, ah, this guy needs to be around it. My, Could you imagine the difference if you'd have stayed? Have you ever thought about that? If my you'd my stayed? wife tells me that all the time. She goes. Why didn't you stay in law school? <laughs> Why did you become a college football coach? You know, and drag me here uh -huh. and drag me there. Where were some of those stops? So you were OU, yeah, and I've seen it all. So now I know some of the big stops. But tell me where it started. Okay. Well, when I was at, uh, I was 
when Jim McKenzie came mm -hmm. uh, from Arkansas, okay. Coach McKenzie wanted a former Bud Wilkinson player to be on his staff. And I was a GA for Bud, so okay. he hired me as a freshman coach. So I, Don Jimerson and I coached a freshman team. Uh -huh. And I, the first year, I recruited Southeast Oklahoma. And Coach McKenzie told me, he said, Jerry, you've got Southeast Oklahoma, and you drive down to Ada, and you introduce yourself to Craig McBroom. Okay. And he, and he if he tells you who the good players are around mm -hmm. there, that's who you go recruit. So okay. I, that's what I did. Okay. And then I had I got some kids to come to OU, and uh, then the next year when Coach McKenzie died, Chuck Fairbanks okay. got the job, and Chuck expanded my recruiting area. I had Southeast Oklahoma mm -hmm. and Northeast Texas. Okay. Well, it just so happened that year the number one player in Texas mm -hmm. was in Henderson, Texas, a kid named. Joe Wiley. So I went down to Henderson uh, every week from December through May mm -hmm. and recruited Joe. I watched him play football, watched him play basketball, watched him run track. <laughs> and finally, he made his mind up uh, between Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas. Okay. And, and when he did that, uh, I got a reputation as a good recruiter because okay. I'd recruited Joe Wiley. Okay. All right, so Hayden Fry hired me at SMU okay. to be his head freshman coach and recruiting coordinator. So I went to SMU for one year, and uh, that was 1971. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that season, Oklahoma played Nebraska in, in the game of the decade in right. Norman. And Coach Fairbanks called me up. And he said, Jerry, I want you to come back to Oklahoma and we're going to create this position for you to be the recruiting coordinator. Okay. I don't know this for certain, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I was the first full-time recruiting coordinator in college football. Now, I heard a rumor you'd even gotten some awards for recruiting. Yeah, I did. Just yeah. a few. Well, one. I, when I was in at Texas A&M, uh -huh. Sports Illustrated said I was the number one recruiter in the country. That's when, incredible. But I represent some pretty good schools. Right, okay? right, right. So I, I was at OU uh, with Chuck, and then Chuck left and went to New England. Mm -hmm. Coach Switzer kept me on. Mm -hmm. I stayed with him through two national championships. And then uh, I wanted to be an on-the-field coach instead of just recruiting. Okay. And Because uh, I got a taste of it being a freshman coach. But I wanted to be, you know, a what college position? football coach. What position? Did you care what position you coached? Well, I coached the receivers. You coached Nebraska. receivers. Coach Osborne. I knew we had something in common. Yeah, yeah. Tom Tom Osborne offered me a job to come to Nebraska to head up recruiting uh -huh. and coach his receivers because he knew I wanted to be an on-the-field coach. Okay. So I did. I went to Nebraska, had a great experience with him. Uh, we, we played Houston in mm -hmm. the Cotton Bowl, Mississippi State and the Sun Bowl, and we played Clemson okay. in the Orange Bowl uh, for the national championship in 1981. Is there yeah. ever a game that you think that was pivotal in your coaching career where you were a field coach that you thought just kind of rubber-stamped, left a legacy that was really important to you? It might not be the one you won or lost or whatever, yeah. but what, is there one game that stands out that you said, I love that memory? Well, there's a memory that I'll never forget. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure. okay I'll take it. I'm not sure if it, I'd love it or not, but uh, anyway, when I left uh, Nebraska, I went to Texas A&M. Okay. And Jackie Sherrill, and we had three really good years, and that's when they named me the number one recruiter in the nation when I was at A&M. Then I got the job at Northern Illinois. Right. My first head coaching job. Okay. And I went up there, spent six years, had a lot of success running the wishbone mm -hmm. in the Mid-American Conference. And then I was given the job at Oregon State. Okay. So I went to Oregon State, and I thought I could do the same thing there. I'd done it in Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. But it, it was a little bit uh, – the competition was a little stiffer in the Pac-10. Right. You know, when you're playing USC and UCLA oh, yeah. and Washington and Stanford yeah. and Cal and Arizona and Arizona State and those schools. But we, we got to the point – this would have been 19 – this would have been 1995. We had won four games, which is the most Oregon State had won in like 10 years. 
and we were playing Oregon in Corvallis. Okay. And what they call the Civil War. Oh yeah. Now they they have changed the name because that's that's not understand proper. You know. Understand. But it was on national television. Uh, Rich Brooks was a coach at Oregon, mm-hmm. and USC had lost to UCLA in, earlier in the day, and Oregon were the Pac-10 champions that are going to play Penn State in the Rose Bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we were playing the Pac-10 champions on national television in our place, and uh, the game was kind of rainy. It rains in Oregon in mm-hmm. November. It's kind of a rainy day. And we had where our kids were playing their hearts out, and we were winning the game ten to seven in the fourth quarter. And we drove the ball to Oregon's by ten or twelve yard line, and our quarterback was a kid named Don Shanklin from Amarillo. And earlier in the game, we had gone unbalanced line, and we run a double option outside, and Don ran about fifty yards. It was a big play, mm-hmm. and we ended up scoring. So, we it was fourth and two, mm-hmm. and my offensive coordinator wanted to kick it. I called timeout. I called him over and I said, "Mike, uh, you give you call the play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fourth and two. You make the call, but we're going for it." Okay. I said, "We're going to stick the dagger in Oregon's heart mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now because our defense was playing hard. I knew if we scored, there was no way they could catch us. There's mm-hmm. only a couple minutes left in the game." Mm-hmm. So he said, okay, coach. He said, let's go the same play. Tell Don. Don's standing right there. Mm-hmm. He said, tell Don we're going to run end over black S block just like we did before. Okay. Tell him to read it like he did before. But probably if Oregon lines up in the defense we think they're going to line up in, which would be the 8-3 goal line defense, okay. then he's going to keep the ball and there's, and, and there's going to be another big play. Okay. And I said, well, Don, you do what you're coached to do, but we think this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so he said, yes, sir. He runs out there. And so we break the huddle and we go end over. Uh-huh. And I hear in the headset, they're in the 8-3. They're in, so they're in the defense. We want yeah. them. Yeah, you got them. We got them. And so we snap the ball. And my quarterback coach, Jay Shockey's in the press box. And this is what I heard. He said, He's gonna walk in, is what he said. He's oh. gonna he's gonna walk in. Well, the left guard was sealing between the, the him and the center enough uh-huh. to get any penetration, and he clicked Don's heel, and Don fell down. Wow. So Oregon gets the ball, and they go and score. Wow. And they win it. What? 17 to 13. You know, I find it interesting so often, like in coaching, you got the perfect play, Yeah, right? You, you got them right where you want them. You've prepped it. Everybody knows it. Then we get tripped up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, – But here, here's here's the rest of the story. Okay. Okay. So, I, I, I leave Oregon State. I come back to Oklahoma. And one of my best friends is Donnie Duncan. Okay. Donnie was the AD. Mm-hmm. At OU, when my that year when I was at Oregon State, and that's when he hired Howard Snellenberger. And oh yeah, he he was watching that game, and he told me later, if we would beat Oregon, mm-hmm. he was going to offer me the OU job. Wow, wow. So one pretty big play, man. You know, but but hey, didn't happen. Oh, there's so many, you know, coaching opportunities. I, I love that story. I, I'm just amazed that you remember the detail of that story, right? Oh, yeah, I can I'm, see it right now. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I ate Monday, and you just described the whole play uh, with the call correct uh, oh, yeah. and, and everything. I want to ask you, is there a particular athlete, whether it be in high school or, or your brief time, yeah. that you would have actually thought about you know, here all these years later, is there a certain athlete that stands out? And I'm not talking maybe the most elite, yeah. but, um, you know, maybe someone that you just just have a great memory of coaching. Well, I, I got to recruit a bunch of great kids. Mm. But the one that made it for me was Joe Wiley. Wow. Yeah, you shared that. Just one – changed yeah. your trajectory of your career. It did. It right? did. To, to be a freshman mm-hmm. coach and go recruit Joe Wiley. Mm-hmm. And here, here, here's a great story on Joe Wiley. So I go down there every week. 
I, I met him in December right before they went into the high school playoffs. Mm -hmm. And he didn't make his mind up until after the state track meet in May. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so that's a lot of trips. You're sweating it. A lot of trips to Henderson, uh -huh. Texas. So it came down between Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas. And Joe's father, mm -hmm. uh, Al Wiley, was a vice president at the Citizens National Bank in Henderson. Mm -hmm. So he called me down to his office and he said, Now, Jerry, we're going to give each school one more time. Because when you get to see Joe, mm -hmm. you went to his living room. You didn't okay. take him out to dinner. You didn't go anyplace. It was you, mom and dad, and the four sisters mm -hmm. all sitting there. So you recruited the whole family. So uh, he said each, each school is going to mm -hmm. get one more shot. Then we want everybody to go away, and we're going to spend some time and make our decision where Joe is going to school. Wow. I said, okay. So we flipped. And I won the flip. So, Arkansas was first. No, Texas was first. Arkansas was second. And Oklahoma was third. So, I'm in Henderson. I called Coach Fairbanks. And I said, Coach, I won the flip. We got one more shot. Okay. I said, so you, you get to be the last guy. I said, Frank Burles. No, Daryl Royal's coming on Monday. Mm -hmm. Frank Boyles is coming on Tuesday. And you're coming on Wednesday. And he said, no, I'm not. And I went, what? <laughs> he said, yeah. Jerry, you know that kid better than mm -hmm. anybody. So you're going to represent Oklahoma. Wow. I said, Coach Fairbanks, Daryl Royal is coming on Monday. <laughs> you're, repeating, you're repeating Hall of Famers. Frank, Frank Boyle. Yeah. yeah. And I went, he he said, no, you give us our best shot. You know, he was even coaching you back then, right? Yeah, he was. He was still coaching us, right? Some of us are coachable. <laughs> so, uh, did Joe know, did he know the impact that he made for your career? Oh, yeah. Later. Did you guys talk about that? Yeah, yeah, later. Yeah, so I went down to the bank, and uh, I asked uh, uh, Coach Royal uh -huh. and one of his top assistants, Pat Patterson, came and they told him he was if he went to Texas he could be a great player and name a job after mm -hmm. he graduated because he was a four point student. He was right. an honor student. And then Coach Burles came in there with his whole staff. They <laughs> yeah. set up a clinic yeah. in Joe's living room, diagrammed every coach got up and said, This is what we can do to help you and all that stuff. And so I'm thinking, okay, there I can't top that. Okay. You know, right, so right. I went down to Mr. Wiley on Wednesday and I said, I know what the game plan has been. Mm -hmm. I said, but would, would you let me just come by the house tonight and pick up Joe and I'll take him down to Dairy Queen on the circle down here and buy him a Coke, just Joe and I. He said, okay. So wow. I was the first time anybody had ever had Joe Wiley alone. Yeah. All right, so I went over and picked up Joe, took him down to Dairy Queen, and we're sitting there, and I said, Joe, probably a 10-minute conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, I said, Joe, you know everything. You, you visited OU. Your parents have visited OU. I've been here. I've told you everything in the world. I actually had J.D. Martin come down and watch him run track. Mm. And, and and J.D. told him if he came to Oklahoma, he could run track, too, which he did. He ended up running the hurdles and uh, at OU and track. But I said, I just want you to know this. If you come to Oklahoma, I'm going to be there for you. Mm. I said, you're going to have a bad day? I said, Joe, you might make a B. He went, no, no. <laughs> I said, well, okay. You might get an injury. Yeah. You, 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 you might start dating somebody and she breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't know. So that's life. I said, but I will be there. Wow. I'll be there for you. Wow. And he, he looked at me. I can see him right now. He's got this East Texas draw. And he went, Coach Pettibone. I said, yes, Joe. He mm -hmm. said, am I that good? <laughs> and I said, yes, you are, Joe. Wow. <laughs> You're that good. But I could probably feel the pressure from the other coaches. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that. I need you to tell me what you would tell the next crop of coaches or what you would love to leave behind to encourage right. men and women 
that are coaching and carry that title with so much pride. All right. Well, I, with this, I've got a high school football recruiting service, and so I talk to college coaches all the time. And there are some good ones, uh, but there's a lot of them that are in coaching because they want the uh, adulation of being a big time mm. college football mm -hmm. coach. They salaries today are over the top. Right. They're really very unrealistic what a college coach makes today mm -hmm. as compared to what I made when I was in, in college football. But I think a lot of these guys don't realize the impact that they can have on young people. Mm. I had coaches in my life, uh, Bud Wilkinson, uh, Jim McKenzie, Chuck Fairbanks, Barry Switzer, Tom Osborne, uh, guys that had a big influence on me. Mm. I knew they cared about me. Mm. They wanted me to get a degree. They wanted me to learn things from college football that would help me for the rest of my life. You know, how to persevere, how to, how to fight through an injury, how mm -hmm. to compete to play. Uh, you know, and, and so uh, I would want coaches today to be in coaching for the right reasons. Okay. Because they want to have an influence on their players. Yeah. Can you imagine how many people you've influenced in all your years of coaching? No, I really can't. I mean, I had a lot of them, but it was a good ride, uh -huh. and uh, and I loved it. And and I I do have guys that mm -hmm. call me back from time to time. Yeah. I had some guys at Northern Illinois. I went into the NIU Hall of Fame a couple okay. of years ago, and went up there for a game, and mm -hmm. they had the Hall of Fame ceremony. I had several of my players at Northern. We all went out to dinner afterwards. And they, they told me stories that they did that mm -hmm. they never wanted me to know when I was coaching. Now they'll tell you. Yeah, now, right. now they're telling yeah. me. And when they snuck out of the team That's right. hotel. That's right. You know, and they – but we, we, had cla we had mandatory class attendance, and there was a mole mm -hmm. in our football office, and I think it was an assistant – Technical guy, like maybe like this guy here. That <laughs> don't don't pick on our tag. When, but no, I when, get you. When when we had a class check, uh huh. Somebody got the word out to our guys because they were running like mad to the class oh, they were supposed to be in. The whistleblower. Here. The whistleblower. We, we did. Wow, wow. That's a, yeah, but that, that that I heard some stories that mm -hmm. night that were really cool, mm -hmm. and I also. Uh, like, uh, for instance, I left Nebraska uh, to go to Texas A&M. Okay. And Coach Osborne told me if I would have stayed, we, we had a dinner one night mm -hmm. at uh, uh, Steak and Ale in Dallas. We were recruiting a nose guard from Plano. And he said, Jerry, he said, I, I'm going to continue to be uh -huh. the head football coach at Nebraska. He said, Bob Devaney is going to retire, and I want you to be the athletic director. And you can be the AD, I'll be the head football coach, and we'll keep this thing rolling. Wow. You know, but then Jackie Sherrill offered me this job, mm -hmm. and Lincoln, Nebraska is pretty cold in the winter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've my, been there. And my, my wife and daughter, they got strep throat. They had all these problems. And so, anyway – Jackie offered me this job to come to A&M to head up recruiting and coach the receivers. And so I was really reluctant about taking that job. Uh -huh. So I did, and I went down there. And the first day I was sitting in the dining hall, and this big old lineman walked in with an A&M T-shirt on and uh, uh, walked up to me, and he said, are you the coach from Nebraska? I said, yes. And he said, my name's Ken Adams. He said, are you a Christian coach? And I said, yeah, I am. Wow. And he went, oh, that's great. See you later. So he leaves. The, ne the next day, we're showing recruits through, the, through Kane Hall, which uh -huh. is the athletic dorm. And there was a bunch of kids standing down at the end of the hall. And Ken Adams was one of them. He said, coach, can you break away for just a second? 
we, and come down here. Mm -hmm. And I did. So I walked down there. I walked into this room. And in that room was Kent, a kid named Jeff Payne. He was a linebacker that played for the Kansas City Chiefs. A kid named Matt Darwin, okay. who was a center that played for the Dallas Cowboys. Scott Polk, defensive end, uh, who was a great player at A&M. David Hardy was a kicker, kicked a 60-yard field goal the next year against Arkansas. All these kids, uh -huh. they're all part of the FCA guys okay. at A&M. And Jeff Payne walked up to me. <laughs> I never, I'm the first time I'd seen him. He walked up to me and he said, are you a Christian coach? I said, yes, yes, Jeff, I am. He said, have you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? And I said, yes, I have. Uh -huh. And his big old tears came. To, he said, Coach, see all these guys? Mm -hmm. We've been praying for over two years for a wow. Christian coach to come to Texas A&M. Wow. So I knew, I knew where I was supposed to be. To move the kingdom. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. If I could, uh, if I could ask you another question, I want one more here. Um, if you were to thank, or just put a message out to all those guys that might watch this, what would you say to them? Okay. So we we have taken this as an honor, Coach, to to literally love listening to your stories, that faith story. I can't imagine how many generations of coaches came out of that crew. Yeah, right. Right. They were ball players first, but then right. they were coaches. Maybe they just coached their kids. But I would be curious uh, what you would say to those athletes that you coached. You know. Yeah. And uh, we we value what you do, and we value the stories. Yeah. And I want these stories to to live on. Right. And um, I want that influence to live on. Because see, I think I think personally, I think a lot of the coaches right now. Um, I don't think they're treated the right way. So I think there's a lot of good men and women that are coaching. Right. That the world is treating them inappropriately. Right, I agree. They're holding them to a standard. Maybe they're at a school that doesn't have a lot of support um, from an administration and right. all that. And they're looking at wins and losses. And they're looking right. at their kid that he's going to be the next running back at the University of Oklahoma. And he might run a 4 8 Right. And you and I know differently. Right. And they're judging those men and women for something that isn't even fair. And I want those men and women to keep coaching. Right. And you guess what? You coached all those men. <laughs> they're out there still doing this mm -hmm. decades, and then their coaches have done it. So I would I would love to to continue that on. And if you want anything to share with them, I I the the, the couch is yours. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a great experience for me to be a college football coach, mm -hmm. and I would I would want them. To realize not only did I hopefully had an influence on mm -hmm. them, but they had an influence on me. Mm. Those kids in that room mm. at A and M were some of the finest young men I was ever around. Wow! Some of the guys I recruited at Oklahoma, like Joe Wiley, like Obi Moore, mm -hmm. like John Roush, like Scott Hill, mm. uh, guys like that who were the Tabor brothers that were strong believers. Mm that had an influence on me okay. uh, to realize that there was something different in their life mm -hmm. that I didn't have in my life before mm -hmm. I made a decision to trust Christ. I, I, I'd want them to know how, how important it is for them to just hang in there and to stick with it because they're, they're going to have an influence that's going to uh, be important in people's lives from then on. Well, I can just tell you for me, you can share this couch anytime you want. All oh. right, we'll come back. I want to hear more stories. Um, I just want to thank you. We actually have a common bond. It sounds like you were the assistant athletic director yeah. while I was a Sooner. Yeah, I, I was. And so uh, we shared a little bit of that before you got here. And I just, um, it's always great. And, and it's a blessing to meet you. Uh, yeah, well, thank and thank you. you for what you've done. You're welcome.